You're listening to the King of the Four podcast, offering in-depth analysis on all things Boston Celtics with your hosts, Jim and Mike Quigley. Mike, here we are again, another King of the Fourth podcast, just the two of us today. At least we're following a Celtics win, which I, I'm not sure we have for like the last seven of these. Um, so that's that's refreshing, um, which I, I thought was a pretty good win. Some some concerning things I think we can hit to later on, including their inability. I think the Celtics and Paces should play 82 times a year. That's right. Well, yeah, <laughs> the one, Celtics have won two out of three, I think, this year. The games um, are just so good. They're, they're really so good. They're always yeah. a deep rivalry. Still can't cover the three, not shooting the three. Uh, that's concerning. It's not a recipe for success in today's NBA. Um, why don't we – If do you got any takeaways you want to give from that game before we get into a lot of bad, <laughs> you know, yeah, we my, did have my, a win, so. My, I mean, the takeaway from that game is Kemba's leadership, uh, the timeout from Brad when we were down 18-4. to four. I, I mean, in my eyes, that game was over. It wasn't mm-hmm. a damn chance they were coming back because they have been playing like absolute crap. Um and it, it, it shows that when Kemba gets rest, you get to see how talented he really is. So that was really nice to see. And yep. the competitiveness from the second unit showed up in a game where Brown and Tatum did not play well. Um, and then the flip side of it is um, I, we've seen this, and then we've seen the team lose three, four games in a row, not show up, play like that first quarter, have a big lead and only score like 12 points in the fourth quarter. So I I want to see some consistency these next three games before the all-star break. Goal to get to 500, get a nice break. We're going to talk about that. Um, that was a yeah. really good game. I enjoyed that game. And I enjoyed watching Savonis uh, versus our bigs. I thought it was really entertaining. I, I, I've always bashed Savonis, and I'm, I'm so no, he's, he's, he's really good. He's, and he's, he's fun great to watch. Passer. He, he's uh, so he, fun he, to watch. Smart play. He's really good. Yeah. I thought Tice defended him well at times. I thought Savonis got some fouls per reputation. I thought Rob defended him well, and I thought yeah. Rob also attacked him well on the other end. Yeah, I thought This so. made him work. Savonis is usually a guy against the Celtics you can mock down for 14 or 15 rebounds. And Rob and Neesmith and other guys stole a bunch of rebounds from him. Oh, Rob's, um, Rob's been terrific. Hustle. Yeah. Rob's, Rob's, Rob's been terrific. Uh, Williams has been terrific. I think he's one of the top four players right now. And um, yes. I understand there's maintenance going on because of his hip. And I, I never question that. When a team has an injury timeline on a guy and they got minutes restrictions, especially a guy as young as Williams and it's a hip, I'm not, I want to see him play more, but not at the expense of his health. So if this is what the trainers and, and the medical people say, that's what they say. And I, I'm fine with that. But he, he's been fantastic. He, he's playing with a lot more just consistent effort than he ever has in his career. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, his athleticism, because he's playing with that effort, is making up with some of his mistakes, whereas before he'd make those mistakes and, he, you know, this, that bounce would kind of go away. So mm-hmm. that's been terrific to see. It was good to see the Celtics get kind of lucky, too, finally. You know, uh, Indiana started missing threes. Um, oh, exactly. Five yeah. for five. Um, you know, Holiday, uh, you know, that three to tie it in the corner three wide open that he was making all game long. Um, I thought for sure that was going in. And then I thought for sure Tice's was going to be a miss. The corner big time. I don't know, because he hasn't been hitting threes for weeks. So it's a make-miss league. It's fun to finally be on the side of making and the other team missing because that's really been going the other way. I mean, you start with Donkic, Don, 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 oh, Don Luka Donkic, and yeah. then you start, you start down the stretch of the Pelicans game. Um, so it was – and obviously Atlanta just went crazy. But the, the, Gallo the, hit 10. Yeah. yeah. So this, that was nice to see. You know, <laughs> usually during the course of the season, that, you know, kind of tends to find its water level, you know, with the luck. And finally the Celtics got some of that. Um, I thought they played with a lot of defensive force. Um, hey, Jeff Teague, two games in a row, he's been pretty good. Um, as bad as he's been all year. Still uh, turns it over too much. Yeah, still turns it over. But that was a good basketball game he played for the most part. I, I can't sit here and knock him. And he was part of the reason they won, if mm-hmm. we're being honest. He was um, – you could make an argument the second best bench player for that game. Well, yeah, that. I mean, and he got to the yeah. free throw line ten times. Yep, so, uh, you know – he provided something for them. Um, you know, if it's too bad, if this is what he was, um, 
you'd probably be in a lot better shape than you are right now. Uh, because Maybe you gained some three, confidence. Three point cards that could go at it, you know. Yeah, I felt like there had to have been a conversation where prior to this game or prior to the Atlanta game where Coach Stevens said to Teague, you have to be aggressive when you come in because we don't have enough scoring. And I want you to drive the bat because it looks like um, they're just having him come in and drive to the basket. And maybe that's playing to his strength because yeah, he's definitely. Uh, yeah. See, Mike, I, I heard him say that. I'm, I, I started thinking back, he was doing that and he was just missing everything, embarrassingly mm-hmm. missing everything, or he was turning the ball over, going to the basket. And I thought he was being aggressive to a fault um, because he sucked. And, and so I, I think the difference is this time he didn't, make those same errors as consistently and, and he made shots and it was nice to see him throw a lob to Rob Williams finally and, 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 and that convert. So, yeah, so I, you know, there, there was back-to-back possessions where he, he penetrated, got the lob to Williams. And then the next time down, he hit a floater and, and those floaters. I couldn't had, believe he hit that floater. Oh, yeah. huh? I couldn't believe he, I couldn't believe he hit that floater. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's nice they got a win, but overall, this is how the Celtics have made me feel. They like driving me to drink. They're impossible yeah. to watch. It, uh, up until, you know, last night, they've been like the clay buckles of basketball. They're just a miserable, miserable team to watch play basketball. Um, and I think we have to tap into the reasons why. And now we're getting to a point where they got to put their foot on the accelerator and stop playing better because teams are going to start separating themselves from the pack. We're not going to continue to have the Eastern Conference at a 500 level like we continue to see. Um, bad teams are going to start falling off and the middling teams are going to start ending up with a record of 10 to 12 to 15 games over 500. And the Celtics have to become one of those teams because right now it's just not good enough. And it's impossible to like this team with what we've been seeing. It's just, well, the well, let's, has let's, been let's, let's, that's a good jumping off point. Mm-hmm. Um, it, I, I, some of it lately you can, you can say is effort. Um, I think when things go bad, especially in the Atlanta game effort, tends to go south sometimes. I'm going to make an argument a lot of this is talent. And, and, and that's why I want to go through this. We, we've, we've, uh, we've had a week of Mike Gorman and Keith, Kendrick Perkins and Scalabrini go out and want to uh, put the blame on uh, Tatum and Brown for not well, rising Perk, up. Perk has been putting the blame on, on Stevens pretty hard. And, and we've seen some of the blame go to Stevens. And look, they all deserve some of it. They all deserve some of it. I, 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 I get that. They're all a team. I want to go through the roster. And then when we're done, let's, let's talk about this blame. Like if we have a pie chart, who is to blame for some of this uh, 15 and 16 season, this inconsistent play? And let's just go through the roster. And, and we have it, everyone on the roster, and we have to break it down into five categories. Have they been good? Have they been bad? Is it an inconsistent thing? Or are there some of, the, some of both good and bad? Is there any promise if they've been inconsistent, or is it like a tackle fall where it's just incomplete because he he just doesn't play and it's not well, he's fair. Bad. To, he sucks. Yeah, have it's not fair to grab it. So, and I'm talking about over the course of the season. So Jalen Brown's an easy one. He's been good. Let's just put an X there. Carson Edwards. I'm saying bad. I don't think he's a good basketball player. Uh, um, if you want to give a different grade, we can put that in there too. No, I think Carson Edwards sucks. He just needed to play because we couldn't get any offense. All right. Any promise with him? In no. The future? I don't think so. Tackle fall will put bad. I, I don't have a disagreement. He can't play because he's, he's bad because he can't get on the floor on a bad team. Does he have promise in your mind? <laughs> he's, no. Okay. Javante Green. Good, bad, inconsistent? He's inconsistent. Okay. Any promise? No. Nope. Romeo Langford, that's an incomplete. We'll put promise with him. Neesmith, I would say we would, I'm going to go inconsistent um, over the course of the year. He's been better of late, but I would still say inconsistent, and I would say promise. I'm going to say I think he's actually been good, and I'm going to say promise as well. Okay, well, put him I think his effort. I think his effort means something. All right, so I'll uh, put this as a, my Q and a JQ just so we know who said what. Uh, Ojale. Bad. Bad. Okay. I, you know what? He's hit like two threes in the last like three weeks. I, I'm going to say more inconsistent because he was what the best player off the bench for a little while there. 
He had a spurt a couple of weeks ago where he was hitting threes again, and he's a minimum salary guy yeah. that's giving you production. So, I mean, I don't know what much more you expect out of a minimum salary guy. I think there's an argument to make that he shouldn't have been signed at all, but that's yes. not his fault. He's a bad uh, basketball player. I'm going to say inconsistent. You'll say bad. Okay. Yes. All right. Hayden Pritchett, I'm going to say good. Yeah. And I think there's promise. Okay. Marcus Smart. Uh, well, I think I think with Pritchett, I mean, what when I think about promise, see, when I think about Neesmith and I think about promise, I think I look at that player could develop into like a starting caliber guy scoring double figure points. I, I don't. I don't see the same thing you see in Pritchard. I think Pritchard's I, a oh, good no, player. I, I, I don't think he's going to be a great player, but I can see a, a Brunson-type player out of him coming off the bench and providing – That's a, actually a really good comparison. Being able to run an offense and, uh, and a rotation player on a playoff team that is going to – you can count on. Mm-hmm. I think that matters. I, I, I think that matters um, for the 20-something pick. Smart, Smart is good. We know who he is. We don't got to say promise anymore. I think he's been inconsistent this year, though. When he Marcus? plays, yeah, I think he's been the best uh, uh, ball handler and, and runs the offense better than anyone else. His defense might not be at to the same. That's level, what I'm talking about. Talking but it's still better defense. than most of the team. Yeah, I think he's been inconsistent. Yeah, so you, you're saying inconsistent based on his him? Okay, his I don't agree. I'll put that in. I, I I don't agree at all. But we'll put that in. Tatum's been good. I actually think in some ways Tatum and Brown have been inconsistent too, especially over the last month. I would say over the last couple of weeks. I, on the whole, they've been excellent. They've been they've been really good. You know, you don't put up numbers like that. I, I, I who, who do we who have we called good players on this team? I, well, I'm not. I'm saying they're good, but I'm also saying they're inconsistent. Is what I'm have saying. they been outside this last week? I mean, it's it's been 25, 26 points a game. It's been five, six assists. I, I I know since COVID, I, if you want me to put him down as inconsistent, I don't think it's. I mean, the entire team you could put down as inconsistent because that's what they are. He is bad. Yes. Um, I, I think for yeah. Tice, the most part, I, I want to say good on Tice. And here's why. Because even when his offense isn't going, he gives you something on the other end. And you you can, he's a guy you can live with. If everyone else is doing their job, not giving you forty uh, percent from three, because he brings so much, you know, you, you just you know the effort that you're gonna get, you know the defensive intensity you're gonna get, you know he's gonna be in the right spot. Um, he seldom makes a mistake that you look at and say, "Oh Jesus Christ, I, what, what happened there?" I, and I know he went through about a three or four game stretch recently where he couldn't shoot. But his overall numbers are still really, really good for a guy making. And again, I'd like to throw the salary in there for a guy making five million bucks. Thompson's inconsistent. He started. He's been really good. Uh, unless you have an argument on this one, he's been really good, and he's uh, lately. But he was really, really bad for a long time. Any disagreement with that? With Thompson? No, I think I think Thompson Thompson's been inconsistent. <clears throat> Walker Walker's inconsistent, right? Yes. Okay. Water is bad. Grant Williams has been bad. Bad. Rob Williams, I think, is good. Yes. Okay, so at the end of the day, I'll put have... an incomplete next to Rob Williams because he's not playing the minutes he could be playing with that hip. He's an absolute incomplete. We still don't know what he is. I think we have no idea how good he could be. Well, I, 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 the incomplete is more if a guy hasn't played. You're not as I, I'm I, arguing though that he hasn't been able to play his regular minutes. I, I understand, but we're like changing the definitions as we go here. Um, he can be incomplete, but it's it's kind of no, that's all right. We can. He's in the rotation, that. you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it really it doesn't matter too much. So goods that we agree on, we have one, two, three, four. So one. Two, three, four, five. And then we both have one extra in different places. So we'll say six, just for argument's sake. Um, bad is one, two, three, four, five. 
and then a six, you know, inconsistent. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, um, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. And only three would promise. So on the whole here, yeah, we're, we're looking, they have five good players on a good day on their team. Everyone else has been bad or inconsistent. Everyone else. So when I, when I think inconsistent, I, I'm thinking you don't know if you're going to get any production out of them or not, particularly with their bench players. Javante Green, from game to game, you have no idea. Uh, Neesmith, as good as he's been lately, you still don't have the confidence of what he's going to be game to game. You have you have Ojale as bad. I had him as inconsistent. It's almost the same thing in some mm-hmm. ways. You know, that's why I didn't want to put Smart there as inconsistent because at least you, you get an idea of what you're going to get every game. Thompson, you know, lately it's been much better, but he was bad. Walker has been really inconsistent. It's been an absolute roller coaster with him. Absolute roller coaster. Yeah. yeah. I mean, one for 12 from three against the Pelicans. The fuck was that? So I need a one you- for 12 from three. So out, out of your good players, you have Brown, Tatum, that you, you know who they are. Then you have uh, uh, Rob Williams with a hip injury that's mm-hmm. figuring himself out for the first time. Young guy, Peyton Pritchard, a young guy, mm-hmm. and Daniel Tice, a limited center. Yeah, right? I mean, the more I think about Tice, too, we talk about his limitations. I think his defensive presence is the most important thing he brings to the team because you, you really don't know night to night where you're going to get offensively. And he's not a good rebounder. I didn't realize that either, um, that he wasn't a good rebounder. But, yeah, I, I mean, these guys, they're, they're, this roster is limited. <laughs> it's really – so you, you have two, even out of your good players. And we'll throw a smart in there, fine. So you have – well, Smart's a good player, Jim. I wasn't saying he wasn't yeah. good. I just think – so I looked at this chart differently than you. By your definition, Smart's a good player. By my definition, everybody on this team would have an inconsistent – I'm, I'm only talking about, like, good players. Like, yeah, you know, I hear you. Good, good, hear solid, you. good solid players. And, and that's Marcus Smart. So you don't – but even out of the list you have, Tatum, Smart, Brown, Pritchard, and Rob Williams. Uh, that we're throwing on as good, good, good players. There's only you would only rank Tatum or Brown as really good offensive players out of that list. Pritchard's emerged; he's pretty good. T- Rob Williams certainly gives you something. Smart's hit a miss. It, so this is no offense. Uh, this this is just not a good roster. It's not a good roster. And, and so when I wanted to do this exercise, when we sit here and we're talking about Tatum and Brown rising up is the players on his team. Who? Who? Javante Green? Can you repeat that, Jim? Because I, uh, I wasn't following you there. So rising we're, up. Talk, we're talking about the blame game, and we want to talk about before Danny Ainge and the criticism from – People within the Celtics organization. This, that's the thing that's really ticked me off because you, you, Mike Gorman, Kendrick Perkins, Scalabrini, I know they work for NBC Sports, but they're affiliated with the Boston Celtics organization. And they start, okay. throwing, the, they start throwing the blame at Brown and Tatum first, and then Brad Stevens. And I look, and, and the idea that they're supposed to ri- raise up the play of some of these other guys – what 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 can he do for what can they do for Javante Green? Can they all of a sudden make him anything more than a straight line driver to the basket, or a guy who no. really can't shoot? No. Grant Williams has turned into a football player on the basketball court. Grant Williams is what yeah. he is. There, there's nothing that surrounds these guys. No, I hear I I I agree with that assessment. I I I disagree a lot with Mike Gorman and Scales. I actually haven't heard it from Perk. Maybe you heard it somewhere else that I didn't hear. Perfect that that same night. It was the same night. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, you know, one thing I will say is that even though their surrounding cast isn't good, when they do trust them and the Celtics are moving the ball, they are a much better team. When they're trusting Stevens' system, 
and it is less ISO basketball. They but, do play better. So is that I don't want to. I don't want to go out here and be like. Is that a chicken and an, I think that's a chicken and an egg thing. I, I think they trust them when they're playing well out there, and they don't trust them when they suck. Because sometimes they're okay, these guys, because they're not good basketball players. They're inconsistent at best. And some nights, the guys they play with suck, suck really bad. And but there's nights where they're not sucking, Jimmy. And then we get into the fourth quarter, and it turns into ISO ball. And the Celtics aren't moving the ball, and they fall apart. And we've seen it Well, the, So Jared Weiss did a great job on this today, actually, of, of showing what the other players are supposed to be doing when um, Brown and Tatum go ISO. And well, the spaces on the floor they're supposed to get to open up passing lanes from those guys. And they're not doing it. So maybe that is coaching. Maybe that's on Stevens. They're not going off to the corner. They're not drifting to the strong side to give them an outlet to, to make a move and then, and then make a cut. It ends up being three guys standing around in positions that they shouldn't be in and, and Brown and Tatum going ISO. So again, I ask, is that Brown and Tatum making the mistake when the call is for isolation? Or is that the other guys not doing their job? I mean, I think it's a mix of both. I also think that there is way too much ISO ball with Brown and Tatum in that, you know, we saw it against Indiana when they were moving the ball. We saw it against the Raptors when they were moving the ball. Uh, we saw it against the Pelicans. And one thing that really frustrated me about the Pelicans game. Uh, the, the Pelicans game was not that. The Pelicans game, that whole first half was built off of turnovers and transition. They, they weren't moving the ball. The Pelicans, perfectly. the Pelicans game plan in the second half would double team Tatum and Brown to play physical defense around the perimeter. The Celtics, easy, the Celtics are easy to guard because they don't have talent. But they also didn't move the ball. But Mikey, they, like, they the didn't ball. even put any effort to. If they can move the ball they want. Their, their plays suck. Their plays he suck. Gets you, but he gets you open looks. And they're not even getting loans. And we talk about them not hitting threes. It's because nobody's open. Wow. It's not like that. It's not like they're the Jay Crowder Celtics missing a bunch of open threes. Oh, they they missed some a lot of open threes against Atlanta. They 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 missed open threes yes last night. There's not a, there's not many guys out there that you're trusting to shoot it. They don't have shooters. So is your is your argument that they just should play ISO ball? No, my argument, is, my argument is they've surrounded them with players that they can't trust. That they but, can't trust because they're not good. And, and so you have two young guys that you're putting a, a ton on, and our expectation is for them to perform and move the ball, but they're moving the ball to fucking G League players. Sure. But why and, did they and, start and, the season eight and three? You know, what, I just, I've seen too many flashes – they need to make changes to the roster, but this is the roster they have. And I've seen they started, the, they started the season eight and three by playing a ton of ISO ball and in, in really close games where they, I think if you remember, they, they there was five games that were decided on the last shot during those first 10 games. So it was teams feeling themselves out and, and they got away with a lot of this ISO ball. It's not good basketball. I don't endorse ISO ball. So this, this complaining about Tatum and Brown that's coming from – Celtics reporters around the team, where do you think they're getting this information from? Who's telling them to do it? Is it Stevens? No, I don't think it is. I, I, I think it's the front office. You know, that's a sense I'm starting to get pushed because it's... Who, Why would the gives, front office be pushing one thing that Stevens isn't? Who, who gives... You know, usually reporters are friendly to the people that give them information and talk to them. And it's just interesting to me that Gary Washburn has decided to go after Brad Stevens and not Danny Ainge. Danny Ainge has put together a, not a bad roster. Horrible a, roster. An incompetent roster that, like, we, we want to move the ball. I, I'm looking at this right now. Like, who do we trust to shoot a three? Pritchard. Pritchard, maybe. Yeah, Sammy Ojale at one point. No, and you're right. You're I right. still trust Neeson. I don't care. Yeah. I trust him. I do. You, 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 that's a lot to put on a rookie. And you're right about the ISO ball, and they, sh they should move it. I'm just telling you, as a 22 and 23 year old or 24 year old emerging star, if they're not, they're not seeing these guys do it. Yeah, it's I agree with you, Jimmy. I'm just coming from the other side to try to think yeah. about where this is coming from. 
because it doesn't make sense to attack Tatum and Brown. And, and, and you should. And they but should. everybody is. Everybody is. And they need to learn to continue to trust and play through the system like you're saying. They need to continue to do that. But in their minds, it's – what am I playing with here? I don't think it's just that either. I mean, you're playing, you, are, you have Walker, Tatum, and Brown all healthy yesterday, and you're still playing Javante Green and Jeff Teague in the fourth quarter. And, and – you can say that's crazy on Brad's part, but again, you look at the roster and you and you say, well, who else should he be playing? Well, I think Javante came in for one specific possession. It was really interesting. I was like, why is he in the game? He played. He only played two possessions on each end, and I think it was for Brad to draw him up a play to get him a free hoop. It was almost like Brad saw something oh, like, if I put Javante in the game, I'm going to be able to run this play for the alley Right he, after he, that alley he pulled him. And he pulled <laughs> so it's him. like he stole a hoop. And he pulled Actually him. good. And get him back to Brown and Tatum. And he pulled him and put back an exhausted Jalen Brown. And you have an exhausted Jalen Jason Tatum playing the entire four. These guys, Tatum missed a dunk yesterday and missed a layup. Not that he Tatum's just – press conference? Did you see he, after the Atlanta game? There's he, four games left to the break. Yeah. He wants – he's like – I mean, his hands are like this in his head when he's in. He reminds me of Zach Brinke in baseball. Like, he doesn't want to talk to the press. He looks depressed. Um, he, look, he looks exhausted. He looks yeah, that's right. He looks absolutely exhausted on the floor. I mean, he front rimmed a dunk. Front rimmed a dunk. And then Jalen Brown, you know, you can see it sometimes through mental exhaustion. He, he, Someone like Walker or someone in the third or fourth quarter drove and got him the ball in the wing for an open three. Drove. And he didn't shoot. He ball faked it, mm-hmm. was open again, didn't shoot it, and then settled for a middle, uh, open middle jumper, which he could tell he was just out of his mind on what he He's was been missing layups too. supposed to be doing. These guys, they've been asked to carry so much of the load with guys around them that are not good basketball players. You know, outside of their bigs, the bigs are good. Thompson, Tyson, are Williams are all good. But they, they need help. They, to, for these guys to be great, they need an offense out there to stretch the floor. And when you, you, you see some success when they're out there and they're surrounded with Neesmith, Pritchett, and Williams. But Neesmith, Pritchett, and Williams can't play 36 minutes. It's, it's just been so limited. And he's done nothing about it. And he's... You know, we, we get back to the beginning of the season. And we, I know we've talked about this a ton, but, like, you picked up Javante Green's contract. There wasn't someone out there that could hit a three and play no. a little defense. And then he picked yeah. it up a second time. Yep. Yeah, the opportunity was... to let him go when you kept him. Yeah, but it, <laughs> maybe – I don't even know what's out there now. I, like, maybe uh, the, 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 the corpse that is Kyle Korver. Korver can hit threes. He hit him last yeah. year. And then – Elias Ova can hit threes. He's out there. I thought Corvus. I thought Corvus struggled last year, but um, and then he never struggled against us. He never struggles against the Celtics. But and, who does struggle against the Celtics? And even Semi, they decided to pick up his. They, they, they had the cancer trade, all of that. But the point is, this was the year you knew you needed some NBA. That ready. kid Bain is shooting forty five percent from three. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah, you know, I don't. I don't have a problem with the draft. You, you 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 traded the thirtieth pick, and the kid turned out to be good. Sometimes that that shit happens. That, that does, is not going to keep me up at night. I think there were obvious things. Those are the things that bothered me. There were obvious moves to be made. That yeah, I, I think the other thing in hindsight that really hurt the Celtics, right, is that first you had the the Kings pick, which you thought was going to be a top ten, top five pick. Yep. You end up with the 14th pick and you drafted a kid who was already injured. And now he's showing, you know, more signs of having some injury problems. And then the following year, you, you're convinced that, you know, you're going to have the Memphis pick and John Morant turns that team into a nine seed. Um, and you end up with the 14 pick. And I, you know, I think Danny really was bad. I think they on. got a good play with that pick, by the way. I, I think these Smith's going to be a good play. I think he's good, but I, I don't think Danny was betting on good. I think Danny was betting on we're gonna we're gonna de- oh, draft some studs. I, I, I think so. You know? so there, there, there's been a string of bad luck and bad moves, and that it's yeah. since Kyrie. There's been a string. I mean, the ultimate bad luck was Gordon Haywood getting hurt, and you don't know what would have happened if he ever stayed healthy. You know, that's the ultimate question. And, and if Danny doesn't use this TPE, you have to take a look at that Indiana trade and ask yourself: Should they have made it? Because they'd have some guys. I mean, if you had Jeremy Lamb on this team right now. 
Um, uh, uh, maybe Doug McDermott could, would be a walk here, but he can score. Um, and you're seeing them play well in Indiana. I mean, I know we both hate Miles Turner, but he's having a great season. And he's playing. He's having a really well. good statistical season. I haven't watched him day in and day out, but I watched him last night, and I watched him three games against the Celtics. He didn't look good against the Celtics. Dude. He looks like the same old Miles Turner to me in those three games, and he, that's not worth eighteen million dollars. Um, he uh, to me, I, I don't. I don't know how much of an upgrade he is over Daniel Tice. I really don't. And I, I certainly, going forward. And I know you hate him, Jimmy, but. I don't I, know how yeah, much. I, I know you think he sucks, but if you're watching Ennis can't play at all this year, it's hard to say he sucks. Well, the center play hasn't been their issue. Yeah, the, 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 the one thing with the center issue that I actually have a problem with now is given a, full mid, given, a, given a full mid level exemption to Tristan Thompson. Tristan Thompson. Like you, you could have went the season into the season with Tice and um, Rob. Rob, and maybe signed like a Harry guy. Or just keep Cantor. You know, yeah, and went out and used your full mid level on on a guy like Jay Crowder. Uh, so the, the I center. I love that man. You imagine him on the team right the, now. The, the center, the center issue. Uh, the, like Crowder would stop, right? Miles My, Turner, you put him on this team. Are they are they really better? You put him on his, this team and you take Tristan Thompson off. And well, you have think, Miles Turner I playing. I think offensively you are. I think he scores the ball more than our centers do. I, I don't know how much better. The ball. They're not that much better. They, uh, they're just not. They're not. You that saw much him better. take a guy off the dribble last night and drive to the basket. None of our centers can do that. Off a crossover. That was an impressive move. I mean, the guy's, I don't think he's terrible. Like, he's not terrible. He's not yeah. worth $18 million for the next three years. Three right? years, yeah. And it's not much of an upgrade over Tyson and Williams. But it's let a- me ask you, if Danny doesn't do anything with the TP, was it a mistake not to make that trade with Indiana? Because this is our roster. That we no, have. it's a mistake not to do something with the TP. I, I, I think that, that would be it. it would be but how difficult team. is it to make You know, that's the thing with the TP. I heard a stat, Jimmy. I couldn't believe the stat. Scared me when I heard this. 75 percent of TPEs are not used. Yeah, but there's never. Um, been it's because you've got to attach things to it. There's never been one this big before, and there's players out there that you can get. Um, I don't think Miles Turner improves you that much this year. I don't think he improves you for the next two years that much. If anything, I wouldn't want him playing over Rob Williams next year, going forward, and I would want to try to sign Daniel Tice for. 10 million or 12 million because I don't think there's that much of a difference. So, or draft the next team. That, that, that trade never made sense to me. And, and you made a good team a lot better by giving them Gordon Haywood on top of it. So, you made it a competitive team in the East a lot better. And, and you, and, and who's to say that trade was ever there if, if Charlotte was willing to pay this much for Hayward and, and offer that's almost like Charlotte to Danny and Fabe, too, because they didn't yeah. have to do that. Charlotte didn't have to do anything. They could have just waved. They didn't have to do anything. Um, uh, no, his job is to do something with his TP. Yeah, it really you is. Know, worst case scenario, you, you get someone to, to help you next year, and then you figure it out. But you, you can't take on bad contracts. Yeah, after watching Dallas play, too, it's I, I just wish so bad that they were losing because Josh Richardson right now and Brunson on Celtics – would if you could make a TP trade for those two guys or Max Keebler? Yeah, I think yeah. I'd rather those two. But yeah, uh, yeah. Dallas got some guys. Even that, even that like Taco Fall guy. <laughs> They're good. They can all score the basketball. Yeah, no, they yeah. Got, they, they have some players that could help this team. There's no doubt about it. Um, and Danny's going to have to do something to help this team. It's it's in a spot now where. You look at this roster. How much do you actually want to give up for this season? To you know, those one-year rentals even get less attractive because you don't want to give up too much because uh, this roster just isn't good enough as it's currently constituted. But, you know, this these next these next four games I, I think are important. Then right after the break is really important. You mentioned they need to get to five hundred. I agree with you. Yeah. I think that for the mentality of the team, that's important. I mean, you're right um, at like the five seed if that happens. And then then you hopefully come back after the all-star break and you get smart and Lankford and you get a more complete look at your roster over the next, you know, 10-game period or whatever. Maybe Danny makes a move during the all-star break. Well, well, that's 
Yeah, I, I don't expect them to. Um, but even after those next 10 games before the trade deadline, you hope Smart and Link for the back because that can tell you more of what your team needs when you have a full, completed look at your roster. Uh, but, it, you know, if they go in two games under and then they, you know, they come back and they have a tough stretch. Yeah. Hey, Jim, before way, we too. jump into that and we talk about your uh, your idea for the Celtics and letting Tatum sip one of these four, three remaining games before the break, which I think is a pretty interesting idea. Let me just tell you how much this season has sucked. The Luka game, when Luka hit two go-ahead threes with 30 seconds left in the game, I heard this um, stat on another podcast today. I couldn't believe it. In the last 25 years, what Luka did has only happened once in the NBA, uh, that which a player has hit two go-ahead threes in the last 30 seconds. Was that a Dan Dickow? And it's fucking Dan Dickow. That's how much the season has sucked. Of course it happened to the Celtics. Yeah, uh, but, you know, things like that happen. You know, not that particular incident, but weird things happen to every team during the course of 82. And if they just um, tried that game, they wouldn't have been that bold because what you saw in that last four minutes is Dallas sucks, and if you put in effort, you're going to beat them because they only care about offense. They don't want to play any defense. That game sucked. That last four minutes, the Celtics, if the Celtics put in any effort in the first three quarters, and they especially in that third quarter in Dallas, there was no effort on the defensive end. We were lucky that Dallas was missing layups to threes to start that quarter. It was like, where was this for the rest of the game? I, I just it drove me crazy because the Celtics were obviously the better team. Because Dallas, with more talent, still has no interest in just trying it all on defense. It's like, yeah, and they actually <laughs> they don't care. They actually <laughs> they played a halfway decent first half too. And then, yeah. uh, then the end of the third and the beginning of the fourth was just a disaster. They they had a stretch in the third where they extended the lead. The Celtics did a little bit, mm-hmm. and then it just fell apart. Um, it, it, I I don't mean to sound like a broken record, but a lot of this has to do with the, they're just not that great. They're like teams are going to go on runs against them because they're not that great. You know, that we talk about effort defensively. Well, you have you're asking your best offensive players to be really good defensive players, and do it on both ends all the time because everyone else, they either can't play defense or they can't play offense, or, or they can't do either. They, I mean, they're just they're not. They're not good. No, what especially <laughs> what's out there right now? It's it's just not that good. It's not good enough. It's hard to watch, man. It's really hard to watch. Yeah. Okay? But these next three games, so we got Washington tomorrow, who, of course, is coming in playing great. The fuck? Um, I feel like that's a must win tomorrow. And then we got um, L.A. Clippers, who I feel like no matter what, how good L.A. is, even though they got way more talent than us, for some reason the Celtics are going to play them tough. And then we got the uh, Raptors, who we've, um, over the last few years, we've been the better team, but. Um, you got some interesting takes on what we should do these last three games. Yeah, I I think it's really important mm-hmm. to win two out of these next three. Two. I think your conference games are really important because they become tiebreakers. And, um, I mean, you're still – I don't think you'll end up catching Milwaukee during the year, but you're still in shouting distance of the three seed. The home court in the first round is still in play, and there are going to be fans in the seats for the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, at, what, at what level, who knows? So those those conference games are tiebreaker games, and I just I find them. Well, we already won the tiebreaker with Toronto. Yeah, but you, then you, but it, it, you know if you're in a three team tiebreaker situation, the next one will go to your conference record. So right, and that's why Miami's ahead of us right now, even though we're one and zero against. Yeah, and then on top of that too, like the more wins you can get against a competitor and give them a loss, like uh, Toronto, you want them to lose, so you have a chance to hand them a loss. I I just feel like right now Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown too, but maybe not to the same extent as Tatum because of COVID. He needs a Walker day off. He needs that Walker back, and I know it's not a back to back situation, and so. I think Washington, even though they're playing really well right now, they're still a team that you should be able to score and beat you know, at home, even though the Celtics are uh, who they are. You know, you still 
you're still going to be the favorite in that game. You should still beat them. LA's going to be a tough game. Uh, they're a talented team. Um, it would be awesome if you got the win, but you, you don't necessarily. It'd be win. awesome if LA just had one of those days where they said, "Hey, Kawhi Leonard's not playing." Yeah, and yeah. Paul George. <laughs> But, you, but you, you don't need that win. And I, I feel like the Toronto won right before the break because it's Toronto, because it's right before the break. Uh, you, you're really going to need it. And I, I wonder if given Tatum off Tuesday night and after tomorrow's game, you tell him if you want to come into the facility Monday and get treatment, that's fine. But we're sending you home after that and you're staying home Tuesday. And don't even come and be in uh, dress clothes. Just get away from basketball, mm -hmm. you know, be there with your kid, spend a couple of days, come back for the last game. Then we have the all-star break um, because we can say, Oh, what the all-star break is coming up, but he's going on fumes now. Yep. And you need these wins, you know, unfortunately because of the position they're in. I think you need the Toronto win. I think you need this Washington win. And now it all changes. If they lose against Washington, maybe you're not going to do that. But if they went on Sunday, I would consider it. I really would. I would uh, yeah, I it. think it's an interesting take. I don't disagree with it. Um, <laughs> I I have no problem with it either. I, I, like I said earlier, you know, just watch him at his press conferences. He doesn't even look happy. So to me, that's a, a level of concern that I would have if I was his coach to say. Sometimes the best antidote is just taking a step away from basketball. I think when you were a coach, Jimmy, one of the best things you used to tell the kids at the end of the season – whether it ended with a win or a loss, as you'd always end in the locker room saying, take these next two weeks and don't touch a basketball. I always thought that was really good advice because sometimes you get a step away. You really do. You got to yeah. take that break from the game. And they were in the bubble last year. Yeah, they haven't had much of a break. No, you know. And then, so. he, then he went through COVID and they, they, he's, him and Brown have had to carry this load that we've been talking about. And it, there's been a ton of games and a short span. And the Celtics, They've been on the road, so they haven't even been in their own homes. They've been on the road more than anybody. Lot, it's like, yeah, um, so and that's well, something else he'd be talking about in his press conference. I mean, I, maybe I'm reading too much into it, but I, I do think he some he's just not right mentally. Like he needs a break. And you know, what's interesting. We're hearing from like Dan Shaughnessy and other people on Twitter. Another, and another guy that's close to Ange, yeah. And and it's just like. Um, the last thing Jason Tatum needs is to stop the All Star game, build yeah. up his head. And he, when, like, where's this narrative come from that Tatum's like this cocky kid, like that he's like a piece of shit? Uh, I've always got like because, the complete opposite because of the kid. media, the media has to blame someone right now. So let me tell you it, why else I disagree with Dan Shaughnessy. I think exactly what Jason Tatum needs is to be at this All Star game, having these older veteran players joking with him, messing with him like making him feel good about himself, like getting to mess around in the game. Like this to me feels like the vacation that a young person that Jason Tatum wants. He wants to go hang out with LeBron. He wants to go hang out with friggin' Chris Paul, even though they're not going to be on his team or whatever. He wants to hang out with Bradley Beal. Like I feel like he's going to come back refreshed, honestly. I do, no matter how he plays in that game. I think like it's going to remind him how much he loves basketball. That's what I think. And he's going to see this yeah, way. He's gonna see. He sees the way these guys carry themselves, and I think he's gonna come back from the from the All Star game motivated. And if I'm Danny, I look at this and like, let's make a trade. Like, let's let's add to this team, give this kid something, because there's a reason he's starting in the All Star game, and the reason he's in the All Star game isn't because he's got a big head or he only plays ISO ball and he only scores points. He's in the All Star game. It's, it's because he's one of the best players in the NBA, and he's 22, 23 years old. So. Let's get off this narrative that he's like that they're building him up to be Alex English. He's not. He could be the next. To me, he reminds me a lot of Paul Pierce. He's led them. He's led them to two Eastern Conference Finals in the last three years. He led yes. them to. He was the second or third best player. He was their best year. player when they went to there the first time because everybody was hurt. Well, yeah, you best player on that team. You can make an argument that there was Al. Horford. Well, maybe Al Horford was more. Yeah, and, more, and, uh, yeah. Uh, on this last year, he was clearly the best player. Even when things were going, he wasn't playing his best. He was their best player, and he, yeah, he did it with yeah. he did it with Kemba yeah. Hurt, and he did it with Gordon Hayward out, and he got him yes. to the Eastern Conference Final last year. And so, the idea that 
he's one of these guys that never wins, you know, or it's got into his head or whatever. I think it's um, bullshit. And again, this to me, this is just the media with someone to they need someone to blame. And there's longstanding relationships with Danny Ainge, and Danny Ainge is good with the media, and he gives them information, and he's chummy with Dan Shaughnessy. So they they're not gonna they're not gonna spoil the relationship with the guy that gives them information. So they're gonna find someone else. And a 22 year old player is a lot easier to go after. I, I it's lazy, um, and it's unfortunate. I, 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 you know, I can't remember an article that I've read uh, by uh, a major newspaper or the the NBC Sports Boston that is hammered Danny Ainge over this. And, 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 and I saw I saw a video his today. Mess. This is I, his mess. I saw a video today, Jimmy. It was some an all-star game that had to be like 10, 15 years ago. And it was a video, like all the players were in the, um, in the area getting ready. And you had Allen Iverson just completely like fucking with LeBron James, like making comments, making joke after joke, after joke at him. And LeBron, LeBron was 18. So he was a rookie in his first mm-hmm. all-star game. And you just saw it. Like you saw the way LeBron was taking that in. Like he was so happy. To like be hanging out with Alan Iverson and Shaquille O'Neal, and it was this level of that. The I think these young players get something out of this experience. Yeah, sure. And he's gonna, he's gonna. And I just hate the narrative, like that. I think the other All Star games in 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 baseball and football, yeah, it's like bullshit. But I think in the NBA, it means something. And I think this this All Star break is really important for Jason Tatum. Um, I hope that I'm so glad he's starting because I think it does a lot for his confidence and that's important for the Celtics. Yeah, no, I think, I think it's a good thing. I, you know, if we're ranking, if we're worried about it. I know we're up against it right now, but he's not, he's not, he's not in my top three. He's not in my top five. I, it's, <laughs> I'm not worried about Jason Tatum. No. Unless, unless he says next year, he's not happy here, then I'm worried about him. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know. I'm worried. Can this team ever be healthy? And we get an idea what. I'm worried. Can Danny Ainge to build him a fucking can, can roster so he can be yeah. happy? Yeah. Okay. You know, is Rob Williams going to continue to grow and get more minutes? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, yes. I. I we'll see. You know, these next few games are important. Um, and they're particularly important because I, I think it's a heck of a schedule when they get out of the second half, and you know, maybe the over the all stop break, we'll dive into that. Um, it also just changes the feeling around the team. Um, if they win three out of these last four and they're, they're, they're at 500 and, and, you know, they, they felt like they protected their home court. And, and, you know, if they somehow pulled out a win in each game, which I don't think they will, and wind up two games over 500, um, it just... Is tomorrow an afternoon game? 7.30. Thank you. So, so, so uh, it's, it's important. It's important, and, and if they're able to pull this out and then get reinforcements back, coming back from the All Star game, you, you know, we'll see how it goes. I, and hopefully, I'm praying to God when Marcus Smart comes back, this double bigs would we, we'll spend. We don't have to spend all. It's just done. <laughs> it's just done. I, I hope so too. But I, you know, I hope so too. But to Brad's defense, I think it's such a balance act when he brought in such a. Uh, a presence like Tristan Thompson, mm-hmm. to, you have to figure out a way to make sure he doesn't get upset because he could ruin your locker room. Uh, I want to close with this thing that will never, ever happen, but I just want to get what you think on it. Um, yeah, sure. All right. If it was proposed to you, you were Danny Ainge, and you, you have to think about all the factors, including you know spending a lot of money on a guy for the next few years. Would you trade the TPE and a three-player deal? So you would trade the TPE and some and a draft pick, and then you'd send Tristan Thompson to a third team that would send um, something back to the other, you know, to the Thunder for for Al Horford. So that way you get under the tax line for this year, um, but you would be in the, well into the tax in the, in the next two years because I think he's making like 25, 28. I would need Al Horford to pass some physicals because for some reason on the Thunder, he he's, he takes a bunch of games off, whether it's because they're tanking. He's playing really well this year, but he's missing a lot of games. So I'd have to have some – for me to take him back, I'd have to see something that says he's healthy and can play every game. Yeah, I, I ultimately would say no. 
just because of the his contract these next couple of years. And well, that's what I mean because he's not he's playing gonna, that much. He's going to decline. Um, but for this year, I think he really helped them. Um, you if can he's start, on the floor, yeah. yeah. You can start running your offense through him like you used to and doing some different things. Um, he's playing he just, really well when he plays. Yep. He's yeah. putting up – yeah, yeah, he's been he's, – he's His numbers up. are good, and he's – I mean, defensively, he's he's good as well. And you, and you know he can cover Embiid. Uh, Maybe. Know. I don't know. Embiid's locked in this year. I, who yeah. can cover Embiid in the NBA yeah. right now? Is, I don't think anybody. Well, he, yeah. he's, he's the one guy that you've had in the past that's had yeah. some level of success. Um, er, and his canter had success against Embiid. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't I, – I, other than the $5 million and just keeping him on the team so you could do some other roster things, as far as him ever playing, I do not miss seeing him on the court whatsoever. You think Lots the defense is, games, man. You Lots think the defense games. is bad now? Oh my God, was he? he it was teams. Uh, I felt like in the playoffs, teams going to score it. You know, you can't score them th- more three points of possession. And what is like Portland five. doing with him to play him thirty minutes a night? Portland doesn't care about defense. They never cared about defense. Yeah, he scores a lot. Yeah, they just um, outscore you. They got Dan Lillard. And they yeah. just say they just outscore that you. That was the cool thing. I was watching Portland. I just saw the first quarter last night. Uh, they, out, they ended up losing to LA. I think LeBron went off and shorter. But um, one thing I, I, I got out of that was um, Dame does such a good job of seeing where Cantor is on the floor. And it's like he'll Dame will know that this isn't a good shot. But it's like I know Kant is going to get the rebound again. It's another possession. Yeah, they are a really good offensive team. Hey, yeah. I know we're getting off. Um, I heard another crazy statistic today that I just wanted to throw at you to see if you could get this trivia question right. Chris Paul's the um, second player in NBA history to make it to an All Star team on four different teams. Uh, who's the other player? Who cool. thought you might know just where you you really know old school basketball. Four different teams. He has a last name with both those last names are in the Hall of Fame. Both the last names? Yeah, so two different guys with the same last name in the Hall of Fame. Uh, let me think. On um, four different teams? Yeah, he played for four different teams and made it for the All-Star game for all four teams. Give me, tell me one of the teams. Uh, sixes. I think he played for the Sixes. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he played for the Sixes. Um, I don't. I don't know. Who Moses is Malone? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The other guy, obviously, in the Hall of Fame is Colin. Yeah. yeah Crazy, yeah. right? Isn't that nuts? I was gonna say, yeah. Um, I was trying to think of old Lakers, uh, but Jabari Imagine that, and making walk in, and then. Um, Four Lakers, different yeah. teams making the all-star team. That's impressive. It is, yeah. Yeah. It is. All right. All right. I'll see you. Um, we'll talk uh, sometime next week. Be safe, everybody. Go Celtics. Beat the Wizards, please. Yep. <laughs>